So maybe you already know what ScreenFlow is, maybe you just stumbled upon this video because you're bored, but either way, ScreenFlow is a very powerful but simple video editing tool that also captures your screen and is pretty popular amongst people making videos for software and video tutorials and things like that, but you can also use ScreenFlow to animate stuff. So this tutorial is gonna go over exactly that, creating simple animations in ScreenFlow that look good, not just using the basic settings, but tweaking the settings to make it look more professional. So with that, let's dig in. So the first thing we're gonna do is come up here to our annotations tab and click the plus button and just make a little rectangle guy. And we're gonna use this as our background. Um, so I have this nice blue color that I'm gonna use for my background. And after that, we're gonna add yet another shape and we're gonna add a circle. So we just come over here to the circle, drag it in and surprise, it's blue, you can't see anything. All right, now I have a bit of a bug going on with ScreenFlow uh, that makes the color not show up until I click something else, so there we go. Okay, so quick thing in ScreenFlow, for some reason they don't let you make solid circles, but to fix that, you can just adjust the thickness of the circle by selecting your shape and coming over to the thickness and cranking that up, but most of the time, even that won't fill your circle in. So what you can do then is actually scale your circle down while you're in edit mode. And then if you need to make the circle bigger, you can go to your video tab and adjust the scale there. So just a quick note on how to accomplish that because that has left me scratching my head more than once. All right, so let's talk about animating things in ScreenFlow. Very just animating shapes. We're gonna animate this shape uh, from the left of the screen to the right. So I've created a video action here by clicking that plus button that says action up in the corner. And I'm gonna, create my before state of the animation on the left hand side of the yellow bar and create my after state on the right hand and then we play it and voila um, feel free to send me all of that extra money and those awards for this amazing animation so now let's just imagine that we want this animation to go from top to bottom well we just move things around bada boom you get it but the problem is that animation looks bad and there's a reason for that. And that reason is the animation is using what's called a linear curve, uh, which is basically not a curve. A curve means the variation in speed at which something travels. So in the event of something, let's say dropping from the ceiling, it's gonna start slow and get faster and pick up speed. So basically ScreenFlow lets you change the curve. So you can come in here, right click, select curve and go through. And so we've selected ease in, ease out here just to kind of show you what, mm, what that looks like. And that makes it go slow at the beginning, faster in the middle, and then slow at the end. When it comes to something just falling, I would opt for a ease in. If you didn't want it just hitting the very bottom and having to create some sort of bouncing animation or gravity effect, you can just drag it out of the viewport and there you go. So that's, that looks like a much more natural animation than what we had before. Now, quick tip on other animating other things in ScreenFlow. Everything you see over here on the right-hand side, you can animate. You can set those before and after states. So if you need to change the size, if you need to change the opacity, if you need to change the rotation, all these types of things you can tweak and change. But for now, we're going to move on to other animation options in ScreenFlow. Recently, ScreenFlow added something called Video Motion, which lets you take a video action and spruce it up, uh, add some extra pizzazz to it, if you will, uh, without having to create any new video actions or do some manual animation. And it's actually really great for a lot of reasons. So let's go through it. Let's, let's go back to this idea that we're having this shape drop from the top and go to the bottom. If we wanted to simulate an actual gravity effect, we would take off all this scaling stuff because that's going to look bad. And then we just do it. And it looks good. Now, now, you don't always want things just falling and hitting the ground. So they have other options like spring. I use this fairly frequently. And it's just a great way to add a little bit of extra emphasis to something. Now, with all of these animations and all of these effects and little things, you don't want to go overboard. Just like most other things in life, subtlety is the name of the game. You're trying to usually convey information or 
teach somebody something or kind of call something out, you still want the focus to be on what you're trying to show somebody. You don't want the focus to be on, look at this animation. The minute somebody's noticing the animation and not noticing the thing that you're talking about, you're over animating. So keep it simple, keep it smooth, keep it slow, don't make it extreme, and you'll be set. So now let's move on and talk about animating text. There are a couple ways to animate text in ScreenFlow. And the first is just like we did before using video actions. So you can just select your text, hit video action, and move things around, right? Before and after state, change the opacity, change the curve to say ease out. Um, you, could, you could do ease in and ease out. But the thing about that is if, if nobody can see the beginning of your animation, the ease in is kind of lost. So I usually go for an ease out for an animation that's going, you know, either coming in from out of frame or is not visible at the beginning because you're saving that easing energy and time and you can apply it to the end and it just looks smoother. But there's another way to animate in ScreenFlow, which is similar to video motion in the sense that you're getting a lot more bang for your buck and a lot more complexity with the same amount of work. And that is using build-in and build-out sequences here in the text tab. Because usually that's what you're doing with text. Not all the time, but most of the time you're just kind of creating a little animation in or a little animation out and moving on with your life. So you can just check this box and preview your animation. So I have it moving up, and now I'm just going to tweak some of these settings and make it move up by character, too. So this is where it starts getting more complex than before. Like, this would be really hard to do manually, but this setting makes it really easy to do it. And so we'll kind of tweak the distance and, and some of this other stuff. You can. This is for you to play around with. I don't have much to say on what settings you should be using it comes down to like what you want to accomplish. So, but this is how you do it. And from there, I don't know, it's looking good, but there are more things we can do to make this look even better. So a lot of the time when I'm animating text in a tool like After Effects, I'll set up a mask on top of the text. So there's a, a hard edge where the text is animating in that's it's kind of being cut off because it's it's coming in to the frame not only coming into the frame but coming into its own frame it's just a stylistic thing and i think it looks good so i'm going to show you how to accomplish that in ScreenFlow. what you'll need to do is copy and paste your text layer so there's two layers and then right click on both of them and select nest clip this creates a little kind of mini file inside of your file and once you're in there, you can just delete the second copy. You just need two layers to create a nested clip, but you don't need the second layer. So get rid of it and go back to your main sequence. And from there, you can now create a bit of a crop. So what you're going to do is select your layer and hold down control, which will let you crop. And you're just going to drag that up to just below the text. Now from here, we can make things a little bit cleaner and simpler we could maybe remove the fade in that's happening on the text because now that we have this crop we don't really need it to fade in as much but that's that's just all stylistic stuff uh, we can change the speed we can change all sorts of things to try to make it feel good but there's one last thing that i usually like to add and that's a little bit of extra motion so we have the text animating in but then i actually take the whole the whole layer select it add a video action and move it, move it down at the beginning and leave it in the middle at the end. And then we have this nice sort of double, double layer of motion. We have the text moving in, and then we have the whole, the whole everything of the text moving up slowly, subtly. It gives it a little bit more of a dynamic feel. And again, you're accomplishing something that is not just a one-click solution that's going to feel a little bit more considered and a little bit more polished than what you're going to get out of the box with other tools, especially if you're not very experienced with animation. So that's all for now. If there's more stuff you want to learn in ScreenFlow, let me know. And also, I'll just say I do teach a course on not just ScreenFlow, but making videos, making really good videos, especially for digital software products. 
and you can grab a link to that below and I'll also give you a 30% off discount. Uh, you can check it out and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.